Mira Mira on the wall, who's the prettiest of them all? You! What is up there guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of The Evolve. How you guys doing on today and welcome to the premiere. Now today I wanted to talk about, now I know that Soldier Boy he has been on interviews and Instagram live and he has been doing a lot he's been making his rounds but as you guys know I haven't really been talking about it because you know well basically besides the trolling and the hype and the sense of um, excitement and just having fun I know that um, you know it ain't really how can I say that real with regards to Soldier Boy. Now, a lot of the things that he has been saying over the couple of days, rather people believe it or not, um, some of the things are, 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 are pretty true, but the majority are just kind of frivolous, we'll say. Or, in other words, they're lies. <laughs> Straight up lies. But I'm not here to talk about Oh, uh, everybody else is talking about that, but today I want to talk about, um, since we are on this Soulja Boy, I want to talk about, uh, that time that he had this beef with Ice-T. So, um, let's get right to it. Alright, so, DeAndre Way, or as known as Soldier Boy, born in 1990, um, he is a rapper, a singer, a songwriter, a actor, and a entrepreneur, um, he is a video game salesman, and he is a um, a MySpacer. A my, a my, I'm just making up stuff right now. But basically, what I'm trying to say is, he was the. That's one of the things that he said that you know. Basically, he was one of the first mainstream. Um, uh, rappers and artists on my MySpace. I mean, he actually did kind of change the way that we consume and um, even market rappers. He was the first one to really blow up on MySpace and YouTube. Um, so, hence the MySpacer. <sighs> Moving on. Now I gotta now I gotta get credit and honor where honors due. Um, because unlike most of the people that we make fun of or we take stabs and jabs at on this channel um he's no one hit wonder i mean unlike joe budden i, I mean come on joe pump it up pump it up oh but unlike joe budden you know soldier boy he's not a one hit wonder he has had a lot of different songs and records um to go platinum and diamond and to go number one on the billboards. I mean, he had uh, Crank Dad um, that went number one on the billboards. He had Kiss Me Through the Phone that went number one on the charts. He also had Turn My Swag On that went number three. He then had Pretty Boy Swag. Hey, Pretty Boy Swag. Hey, that went number five on the charts. And then he had Soldier Girl that went number 17. And then he had a song called Swing that went number 20. And then he, I mean, he had, he has, I mean, every album, I gotta say, he he's managed to put out hits after hits. And a lot of his songs have went platinum. Now, I haven't fact checked this just yet because I was listening to his um. I was listening to his interview on The Breakfast Club, but he did say that uh, Crank That has sold more than Thriller, more than Michael Jackson. It uh, Probably not far off. I mean, he does have streaming and YouTube and Facebook and a lot of different stuff that, um, so that could be true. I haven't checked that yet. You guys can check that and let me know in the comments. So, but anyway, that's Soldier Boy. Now, on the other side of this beef that we're talking about on today is Tracy, or as well known as um, Ice-T. Ice-T was born way earlier than Soldier Boy. He's an he's a old school, or he's an old head, what we would call him. Um, he was born in 1958, and you know, he, he got his career started off um, underground um, in the 80s. 
I see he is seen as one of the kings and one of the OGs and I mean he is a legendary you know hip-hop artist you know he's one of those ones when you think about one of the godfathers or you know you you think about Ice-T he is truly an OG of rap um, and hip-hop uh, now he has also had his share of hits and tracks and accomplishments. I mean, he was nominated for three Grammys and also he ended up winning one Grammy um, for best rap uh, performance uh, in 1990s, in the early 90s. But then um, also he had some Billboard uh, hit songs that top the top 10 for, uh, uh, he, had, um, he, he had a song named Power, um, original gangsters, home invasion, uh, iceberg, and rhymes play, pays, rhymes, rhymes pays. But these are all songs that were well up on the charts. So both of these artists, they just came from different generations and times, but still had their fair of success. But you know, around 2008, when Ice T, he was mixing up his 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 he he was in the studio um making a new album um he decided to diss uh soldier boy and basically this is what he said black ice ice t silver the navigator fuck soldier boy eat it dick. this nigga single-handedly killed hip-hop soldier boy let me talk about soldier boy soldier boy i know you young enough to be my kid but you single-handedly kill hip-hop man you know what i'm saying i i can't from man, all that, that shit is such garbage. You can't do that, man. We came all the way from Rock Cam, okay? We came all the way from DOS Effects, came all the way from up flowing like Big Daddy Kane and Ice Cube, and you come with that Superman and Hurricane. Take the beads out your hair, kid. Come on, man up, you niggas. Stop bullying. You niggas is making me feel real mad about this. Shit. We took it all the way to khakis and straps, and you niggas looking happy, man. That's whack. So yeah, Ice T told Soldier Boy, you know, he's messing up hip hop. You know, forget that Superman. You know, you messing up hip hop. And he told him to E A D I C K. We don't want to get demonetized, but he told him that. And it's funny, real quick, guys, if you go i don't know if you ever watched the show called boondocks but on boondocks they did an episode of this you um, know they remade this episode of ice tea um telling uh soldier boy to eat it, it, it it's a very funny show very very funny cartoon but anyway getting back to it so um so yeah ice tea is getting on this guy and you got you gotta think about this soldier boy he is about 17 years old at a time not just 17 years old it's funny i said 17 because actually he had about seven million dollars in his bank account um he you well his net worth around that time at 17 years old but anyway um Soldier Boy, he responds to this diss, and this is what he said. Look at here. This nigga Ice T old as fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, nah, this nigga old enough to be my great grandfather. Like, he's the forefather of my nuts, nigga. This nigga. This nigga was born, man. Hey, nah, we Wikipedia this nigga. This nigga was born in 1958. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga comes. <laughs> hey, this nigga, tell me he from the West Coast. This nigga, you was born in New Jersey, dog. <laughs> For real, like real talk, uh, this Mr. Tracy Lauren Morrow. Yeah, I know your name, nigga. I know, I looked you up, nigga. This is new, this is new damn age, nigga. You was born three centuries ago, my nigga. Last time, yeah. It changed, dog. Now, the last time I, like, who the fuck is Ice-T, dog? Look, the last time I heard of this nigga was in Superhead book, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dog, this nigga, dog, I see this nigga on TV the other day. This nigga playing on Law and Order, solving mysteries and shit. <laughs> How you gonna make a song called the police 35 years later, your ass playing the police on TV? <laughs> At the end of this video though, the point that we're trying to get across was, well, man, you was wrong for that, man. Think about it in my shoes, man. This time last year, though, I was poor as fuck. I was in the hood. I was in the ghetto. If, if, if what you live in is true, if what you live in is true, you will understand where I'm coming from. Nigga, I, ain't, I wasn't born rich, nigga. I wasn't born in no big ass house like this. Nigga, y'all work to get this. I'm 17 years old, dog. Nigga, I worked hard for this shit. You feel me? Even if, even if it was, it, all this got me out for one song, nigga, you should, you should be congratulating. 
You should be congratulating. Real talk. You should be you should be telling me congratulations, young brother. Get your money. That's what you be saying. That's what you should be saying instead of eating. Do some shows. Speak, nigga. Hit me up. I know you all them all that money you got. You can get in contact with me, nigga. Get in contact with me, nigga. Give me some pointers, nigga. If you really if you really think something just was started so long ago and it keep going on today and you think it's dead or you think it's really killed or it's real messed up like that, do something about it. Save it. Save it, nigga. Save it. Save it. If you really think it's finna die, if you really think it's dead, nigga, revive it. You feel me? Do something. Bring it back to life, nigga. Help it out. Instead of dissing the niggas that's trying to only do what y'all created, why diss us? Nigga, help us. You feel me? Help me help you, nigga. You feel me? I'm doing, I'm just doing what I know. I'm doing what I gotta do to eat, nigga. I'm doing what I gotta do to provide for my mama. I'm doing what I gotta do to provide for my family, my little brother, my little sister. You feel me? Them niggas still in school. You feel me? You telling and you telling the only role model in their life to eat a dick. Nigga, you gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. Old as you is. Old ass nigga. Nah, nah, real talk. I respect you. I used to, nigga. I don't respect you no more. You probably don't need my respect. But money ain't everything, nigga. I, real talk. All that money you got, you could be doing a lot of shit other than telling a 17 year old nigga to eat a dick. You feel me? You could be doing a lot of shit right now, nigga. Go to the hood. Nigga, nigga start a hip hop school, nigga. Save it. Nigga, do something. You, you one of them niggas that talk but don't do nothing. You, you, you probably doing that to get a buzz or to sell your album. I was wildin' even back then. But you know, um, to really kind of start to wrap this whole beef up, because this beef, it didn't really go that far. It wasn't really, I mean, it kind of got handled by Ice-T. Because, you know, <clears throat> Ice-T, he did say that, um, he did say in a future interview that, you know, thinking about it, you know, that's not something, um, he didn't want no beef. And he didn't mean for that to get out. Ice-T explained that he was just in the studio and he was kind of like rhyming and trying to get it. But then the DJ and his hype man was trying to get him to, um, to kind of get mad, to really bring out the bars. And he was trying to say, hey, and this is what Ice-T explained. He's like, he was talking about, come on, all these new artists, they got Soldier Boy, they're going platinum. Come on, get mad, get mad. And he was trying to pump Ice-T up to, because he was in the studio recording. And then Ice-T, you know, he, he explained that basically he, he he just said some stuff. He was like, dude, talking about Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy can eat. So, you know, he said that was a conversation between him and the studio, the DJ. Um, you know, it, it, he didn't mean for it to get out. And he didn't even mean it in a beef way. He didn't want it to, it wasn't nothing personal about Soldier Boy. He was just going through a lot at that time and he was mad. And he ended up saying that, you know, he apologized for that and um, he understands, uh, you know, what Soldier Boy is doing and that um, that is actually something that he didn't really mean. But you know what guys, in closing, I just wanna say, you know, my thoughts when, with regards to hip hop and dissing the different generations. The thing is, is that, you know, hip hop, it seemed to change. To, it, well, not seem, but hip hop, it changes every 10 to 15 years. And it, it changes in the way we consume it. It changes in the who's presented it. It changes in the way we see it. And even the mere definition of hip hop, it changes every generation and different generations they see and they experience hip-hop differently according to their circumstances and what they're going through and what is viewed and what's going on during the times so it is presented differently and that's why i i guess that's why in this beef case i would take soldier boy's side because Honestly, like I said, it changes and it's it's for some generations it it was about, you know, being lyrical. Some generations it was about being poetic. Other generations it was just about um chains and other generations it's about having fun and just playing around. And I think that was Soldier Boy's 
generation of hip hop. But either way, you're making those duckies, you're stacking that paper, and you're making a way for your family and those loved ones. You're finding a way to, I guess, make money and provide for yourself. So I can respect that. But like I said, it changes every generation and I think each generation dwells on the past and think back like like in the 80s the 80s were saying man hip-hop was really good in the 70s the 90s everyone was saying man I wish we can go back to the 80s here in 2008 we say man the 90s were the best so it changes guys but anyway um this the, that's just my opinion. I like to know what you guys think. What you guys think of this whole beef or hip hop in general? Whose side would you be on or, or, or whatnot? Not really a side, but I just like to know what you think of hip hop and music and Soldier Boy in general. I, I, I always read your comments. Thank you guys. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Other than that there guys, KIP, keep it positive. It's gonna be all right. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, wait a second. There is something else. Off point. <laughs> Y'all know about the Soldier Boy console. Um, in the Breakfast Club interview, um, <laughs> Soldier Boy said that his next console is gonna have Fortnite on it. I do want to say that Epic Games, um, the creators of Fortnite, they said, uh-uh, he's lying, it's not happening, there ain't gonna be no Fortnite on no Soldier Boy. <laughs> they already released a statement, I just had to put that in. I just had to put it in, just saying, they're like, uh-uh, we ain't paying for no wall.